Hello, good day, and today we're going to be doing the second part in a two-part tutorial um, where I will write an algorithm that will make a polygon of any number of sides. And so, as you may well know, a polygon is a word for a shape, um, as in a shape that has a certain number of sides. You might say we're going to be looking at regular polygons that's, that has a certain number of sides and all the sides are of the same length. And so, first let's recap what was done in the last lesson. Um, so last lesson we wrote some scripts, the four of them you can see on the screen. One made a square, one made a pentagon, and one made a triangle, and each of them responded uh, to different arrow click, the space making a square, the right arrow making the pentagon, and the down arrow making the triangle. We also used the clear command when the up arrow is pressed to clear the screen, which I'll demonstrate now. Um, and also you'll note that there's a pen down and pen up which make the sprite draw in on the background or the stage as it's called in BYOB. Um, today what I'd like to do is to make a general algorithm for any shape. So instead of having three different um, algorithms or scripts as they're called, um, I'd like to make just one. And to do that, we, we will need to be using build your own blocks. I'm aware that some people use Scratch, um, and actually you need to be installed BYOB. So if you do a Google search of BYOB and download it, it's available um, on all platforms, Windows, Mac, and Linux. Um, and if you go into the BYOB menu, BYOB stands for build your own blocks, and it has an extra command here that isn't present in Scratch called make a block. You can click on that and you can make a block with a certain name. So here it's going to be draw shape. I'm going to want sides, colon, and that'll do for now. So draw shape, sides, click OK. And here I'd like to plus and I'd like to create the input name sides. And I can click this next arrow here and choose the thing that I'd like you to type in to be a number. Here I'm specifying the type of data. So if you'll look at the in this menu here, you'll see that sometimes you type in a type of data that's uh, text, sometimes it's a number, other times it's true false, um, and this time it's just a number because the number of sides can only be between certain values. Click OK. And I'd also like to specify the length and make this text and put a colon space there. This is text, click OK, and then finally I need to add another variable, this is an input name, and this is going to be the length, and click OK. Now if you look down at the bottom menu here, this command has actually come up, and you'll see that this says draw shape sides, round area for a number, and length round area. So you can add your own values in here and it will carry out the algorithm there. I'll have noted that I didn't specify the data type here, so I'm going to go back and do that. There we go, and I can edit the input name. That was a right click, I believe. I edit the input name, and I'm going to change that back to a number and click OK. Brilliant. I'd also maybe want to um, change the um, colour of this, so if appears in a certain menu. I'd like it to appear in the pen menu because it's a drawing command. So I'm going to change this by double clicking on the orange area there and then click pen and then OK. And now when I look in the pen command menu at the bottom it's draw shape, this number of sides and this length. Super. And um, now what I want to do is I want to make a general formula to draw a shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the commands that are inside the square, and we'll adapt these for this general shape. To start with, I'm just going to show you how to use a variable. So the values here, they're actually called parameters, and they've been given um, from the, de the um, block, and they're passed into this declaration here through uh, the slots. So and it's called passing a parameter. So if I want to move this a specific length, I will drag that and place that into the moves, and this will control the size of the um, of the shape. And so 
what I can do now is I can go back to the square menu, delete that, place this of, I can leave sides blank because I haven't actually done anything with that yet, and I can specify the length, so I don't know, 30, if I click OK here, now when I click the space key it draws my 30, however if I was to change that to 90 and click the space key, it draws a square of size 90. What I want you to do is to pause the video and then come up with your own way of editing this by right clicking on it and clicking edit to, so that it creates one, it will draw a shape of any number of sides and you specify the number of sides and I'll give you a moment to do that. Okay, so assuming that you paused and have gone through the exercise, um, I'm going to show you how to do that now. You'll First of all you need to, this is called generalizing a solution and we have solutions here for a square we have one for a pentagon and we have one for a triangle and you need to think how sides relates to these numbers that are given as constants so what's the relationship between the number of sides and the number of times it repeats well you'll know that there's a one-to-one -one relationship between the number of sides and the number of times it repeats so for example if a square has four sides it's repeated four times if a pentagon a pentagon has five sides and so it's repeated five times and equally if a, a triangle has three sides and it's hence the algorithm is repeated three times so here I'm going to drag this down to there to be repeat side and that means the number of sides it is is the number of times it does this the other thing that varies is the number of degrees it turns and this is the external angle of the shape it's the angle between the way that it's facing and the way that it turns to. And you know that it turns 90 degrees for a square, and you'll note that it turns further than that for a triangle, it turns 120, and you'll note that it turns 72, which is a little bit less than a square for a pentagon. And what I'd want to know is what's the relationship between the number of sides and the number of degrees it turns? Well, a hint for this is in total, when they draw the whole shape, it turns 360 degrees round. 360 degrees and is facing in the same direction at the end and so you need to divide that 360 degrees by the number of sides and that will give you the correct number so with a square a square it, you go around a full circle that's 360 there's four sides and so 360 divided by 4 is 90 equally 360 divided by 5 is 72 and 360 divided by 3 is 120 and so in here we need to get the computer to divide 360 by the number of sides and that will be the number of degrees it turns so in here we go to operators and this has all of your operations these are known as the arithmetic operations and we have a divide sign we go 360 and the divider sign which is divides by the number of sides and then click OK so now when I type in, I'm just going to click the up arrow to delete everything, and when I type in the number of sides, that being, I don't know, we go for 6, hopefully, when the space bar is clicked, it draws a 6-sided shape of length, 90. Now what you can do is you can delete all of the other two um, scripts, and you'll see that you've got a generalised block which will work for any type of shape. Now you may be wondering, well, that seems like quite a lot of effort. Why couldn't I have just programmed all the different shapes in? Well, there's actually less effort because you don't need to reprogram um, each script every single time. So instead of making four, four, five, six, seven, or eight scripts, you just make one script and you generalize the solution. And this is can lead to reuse of code. So now whenever you want to draw a shape, you can look in the pen menu and you can find the shape. It also means your code is more readable because pro other programmers if they were to edit your code would know exactly what groups of instructions are doing not have to interpret what they're doing for themselves so today I have shown you how to um, generalize um, a set of algorithms into a single algorithm and how to build your own blocks in the program BYOB thanks very much for listening